What is happening, everyone? Today, I am here with Dustin Hutchinson of Color Pros Northwest. Welcome, my friend. Appreciate you uh, jumping on to a business breakthrough. You got it. Thanks for having me. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, man. So just starting out, rebranding, what's the story? Uh, I had a, a remodeling and painting company. Started as a remodeling company and uh, morphed more into a painting company in Western Washington. Okay. Um, but it was something that I kind of started out of desperation, honestly. Gotcha. I had zero resources, um, but I had skill that I had learned uh, from working in a cabinet painting shop. Okay. So I just immediately started taking on jobs. Um, I think it was end of 2019, beginning of 2020, when I took my first, or actually, it was the first job that I did in this space. Um, and I did that, that was my last off the books job. Okay. So it was the first job that I did, but the last off the books job I did. Okay. And that one was a, a complete interior repaint, did a bunch of flooring, did a bunch of, uh, cabinet painting, basically the entire inside of the house got a complete remodel. Um, you know, ev every surface got touched. Um, and I realized at the end of that being, um, not a company, not, not legitimate, didn't give me the ability to right. charge what I needed to, to actually be profitable. You know, I could buy my lunch and I could fund the gas for my car, Sure, but I wasn't doing anything, uh, beyond that. So the, I immediately took the resources I got from that and put it into incorporating and trying to go legit, but still didn't have a, a great plan. Didn't have any plan for marketing. Didn't have any plan for, um, doing like what you do with the CRM and project management and stuff like that. Right. Right. Um, so the next job that I did was, um, we got really lucky. It was, uh, an $83,000 project, another complete interior refresh on a, a very nice house in, um, Buckley, Washington. Um, and we knocked it out of the park. It took a little longer than we wanted it to, but we did a good job. Um, but still, at the end of that one, without, you know, the infrastructure in place and a solid plan, I was pretty much back to square one. You know, as yeah, we, we How made long good. Did that take you, by the way, that eighty three thousand dollar job. Um, Three months. I think it was five. Five months. Five months. Yeah, it was a um, what was that house? It's probably a, a five thousand square foot house. Just me and my son doing all the work. Unbelievable. Um. And we, you know, we had to do it. We had, it was two stories and it was, you know, a full home upstairs and almost another full home downstairs. Right. We wound up renting a, um, a storage unit and putting everything from the downstairs in the storage unit. So, you know, we were doing moving. You feel like you made money? You know, I know I made money, but the you know situation that I was in, no, I, I don't, I don't know okay. how much that's part of the problem. Sure. That's okay. You know, cause again, coming from, uh, Coming from a place where, you know, we we started with nothing, so everything just got, had to get rolled back in. You know, we down, had to buy right? all. Kind of your your heads down. You're cranking through it, right? You're just like, let's Correct. get this done. You're you're surviving, right? I mean, it's probably exactly. a little challenging getting those draws, getting the customer to give you draws yeah. on that sort of stuff, and then. Well, they were they were good about that, but um, you know, it was all hand to mouth at that sure. time. Sure, sure. So. Okay. Uh, so where are we so, at now with the business? What's, what's, what's going on? I mean, how, how, who's working with you? How are you getting these jobs? So that one, that one folded up and we're actually right now, we're just in the beginning stages of reincorporating a new business. Okay. Um, and I've actually got some resources. I spent the last year doing sales. Okay. Um, I, a friend of mine asked me to come and help with his company. So I, I came in as an owner on the companies. We sell freeze dryers. So, you know, the Harvest Right brand freeze dryers, okay. uh, I started selling those. So from January to March 5th, when I started, the company had done $765 in gross sales. From March 5th to December 31st, I pretty much single-handedly brought it from $765 to $846,000 in gross sales. Wow. Holy cow. Uh, so, and that's, you know, that's selling a you know, a rather expensive appliance, essentially kind of what's pictured behind me there. Sure. 
Uh, so we leveraged some of the uh, the My assets that we made. talking about a freeze dryer. She wants to freeze dry. <laughs> Let me have a conversation with your wife. Have you have, have a freeze dryer in your house. <laughs> she was just mentioned that. No, you know why? Because my kids love um, dried strawberries. And, uh, dude, they're like yeah. $9 a pack. And I'm like, well, you know, is it, a, is, it a, is it a worthy investment? We might have to talk after this. Yeah, it, it could be. I'll talk to you more about that. <laughs> we'll catch up on that. Um, yeah, so, so we took some of the resources that we made selling these machines um, and we put that towards actually having some resources to start this painting venture back up. Got it. Um, so the business partner that asked me to come and help with this thing here, I said, all right, well, you know, let's have the company loan out some money. We'll, uh, we'll use that money to start this and then you can be a partner in that. So, uh, we got resources. He's better at the back end stuff, yeah. you know, work updating websites and yeah. stuff like that. That that's his thing. My thing is out there selling the jobs and doing the sure. jobs. Sure. So we're, uh, we're starting over. Okay. We're going to, rather than me being out in the field with all of my time occupied, you know, spraying and rolling, I'm actually going to be selling jobs, estimating jobs, things like okay. that. And then that's, that's where I'm really excited to be working with you to, uh, to get the drip jobs going so that I have the infrastructure I need yeah. to, uh, to make this work so that it can function and be profitable. Big, it's going to be a big shift for you. Um, if it's not already, you have the mindset of, Hey, instead of me working on the product line, uh, the fulfillment, you know, I always like to use Amazon as a good example of what you're really doing is you're yeah. putting, you're putting the, the widgets in the boxes and sending them out whenever you paint. And I'm not deducing the right. work side of things. It's so important, but that's really what you're doing. And now you have to go find the customers. You got right. to convert opportunity. So the difference between an average salesperson and an above average salesperson, which I'm sure you know now that you have so much sales experience selling these freeze dryers, is taking people that are on the fence and getting them to jump over to your side of the, you know, the grass. Right. Different than a commodity, okay? Because ultimately, what you're selling behind you is a commodity. Are you in agreement with that? Yeah. Yeah. Because ultimately, it can it can be compared to another freeze dryer, can it? Like if right. I have, if yeah, I have there's, there's a couple of other options, brands. Right. If I have two freeze dryer options, I got one over here that's sell, sold by you and I got another one that's sold on Amazon for, for, uh, you know, a thousand dollars less, you know, for me, I'm looking at, Hey, how much do I value a freeze dryer? Uh, and ultimately the decision comes down to how much am I willing to spend on a freeze dryer, you know, as opposed to what you're right. selling now. Right. So my question to you, and really, I, I mean, I'm, I'm guessing that the focus of this talk should be on sales. Is that mostly what you're looking to talk about? Uh, customer acquisition. Okay. Uh, I, I'm, I'm very confident in my sales. Okay. Um, you know, pretty good close rate. Um, I'm working specifically with a, um, uh, a sales training agency because okay. I'm really good at the technical logical side of the sales. Here's the reasons why, but the emotional side of sales is a place that I'm, I'm not that great on. Cause, cool. cause to me, that's not what sways me. You know, ah, I, that's like, a good point. That's for you. That's not something that sways you, but for your customer, it might. So you need to learn that side of the fence, right? Right. Right. All right. So, so when you talk about so customer, acquisition, well customer acquisition and sales go hand in hand, right? Because if you know the channel mm -hmm. of, of where that customer is coming from, right? So like, let me ask you this, let's start here and, and we'll work backwards. Um, you just started this painting business. How much are you spending on marketing? If anything, uh, right now we're looking to spend, um, probably about 8% on marketing between five and 8% of what? Of uh, projected gross. So I do the, um, so my business partner and I have a difference in the way that we do things. He likes to do things where from the position of here's how much money we have right now. So let's spend, you know, 8% of what we have right now. Well, let's and figure out that projected. Can we figure out what that projection is first? What is your projected gross sales? And how did you arrive well, at that? That's, that's the difference is he likes to do it from what we have and I want to do it from what we want. Okay. So I like your way better, to be honest with you. Uh, we well, got to figure out. My way is proven to work and yeah, his yeah, yeah. didn't. 
and that's okay. That's <laughs> so, okay. Yeah, it's a little bit, but all right. So let's look at what a projection would be, right? So first of all, projection in the painting business is based off of who can actually produce. So who's going to be doing these jobs? Right now we're looking to hire painters. I'll probably, I might wind up doing the first few jobs just while we're in the recruiting phase. Um, but eventually it will be, um, you know, so paid, let's set a paid employees. Can we, can we set a benchmark of like what the ideal, um, okay. So let's say color pros is a Let me frame. pull up my numbers. Yeah. So, so let's say color pros is a franchise. You come into my town and say, Hey, um, and I want to be a franchisee of this company. Explain to me what an ideal job site production par is for, for painters, right? So are you going to be a one man painting operation? Or are you going to be a two man team? Or are you going to be a three man team? Which, which of those something, maybe four, maybe you love the bigger teams and you want to knock jobs out quickly. What, what do you feel like would be optimal? So for simple jobs, like a typical bedroom, it's probably going to be a one man show. Um, so you're going to you know, get the, it. You're going to run into stuff with that. Cause here's the deal. Cause this all goes back down to what type of jobs are you going to take? Cause the reality is Dustin is if you put together a team of two or three and you only take on a bedroom and that's the only job that you have for Wednesday, how are we going to do that? Are we going to send two people home? Right. Well, the idea that we're starting out with is to hire one painter per quarter at a minimum, and then to build the uh, the portfolio based on, that's on growing. That's a very into that's a that's a recipe for. I'm gonna not to offend mediocrity. There's no reason yeah. why that is that is a recipe for mediocrity, and I'll tell you why because ultimately, three painters is enough to keep you guys going through the first quarter right now if you hired three painters right now you could stretch out jobs in a way that at the very least you're just selling jobs to keep them employed to build up your system yeah so if you look from a startup perspective right the goal of a startup which i i'm going to consider you a startup the goal of a startup is to not make any money until uh you know you make money and sometimes we got to go deep and ultimately man for me i would say waiting to hire a painter a quarter is you're losing a valuable amount of time to build camaraderie on the job site to build a team. Sure. And for the most part, I agree. That's just the, the benchmark that I've set as a minimum. Sure. That's not, you know, that's not my okay. maximum. That's the minimum. So let, if we can start getting have, jobs. Yeah. And let's say you have three, let's say like, let's say the color pros is three. Cause I just want to get to this projection number. Right. So if you think about it on average, you might hear Nick Slavic say this, um, but ultimately you're going to, you're going to hear uh, that each painter should generate about a hundred thousand dollars for the year. Okay. Right. So I've got it projected. He's actually at about 150. I got about 132,000. Okay. So you're at uh, 132,000. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. So 132,000. Now a single painter probably isn't going to do that because of burnout. You know, so we got to kind of yeah. look at that number and say, well, generally speaking, a team of three, maybe that 130,000 makes sense for me on a team of four, it's 110 100 to 110,000. Okay. So you kind of got to yeah. look at it and you'll feel it out. So in that case, let's just try to try to break that down. I'm going to just go three painters at a hundred thousand. Cause that's just the safest number that we can assume. So you have 300 grand for the year with three painters. All right. So what's the monthly number on that? 300 divided by 12. All right. So that's about $25,000. So you're saying that you told me that your marketing number is about 8%, did you say? Right. All right. So you're looking at about $2,000 a month in marketing, right? Yep. Okay. Um, what channels are you thinking about? Uh, we're going to be building uh, our Google portfolio. Okay. And then uh, we'll, we'll have a, a social media presence, but I don't intend to do any... Um, necessarily marketing through there. Okay. Not through Facebook. Um, Why? but well, primarily with what I had found is, uh, I didn't get any good engagement when I was doing that before. Um, did you do it yourself? And, right. I did, but that's why I'm hiring an ad agency. So that's okay. part of uh, sure. what we got. Have you hired uh, so that, yet? you know, yeah, I've got someone hired. Cool. Um, so we're, uh, you know, we're going to be doing A-B testing and we're going to go with what works. But for the first part, 
what we're doing is building our, our Google presence and our Bing presence. So in terms of demographics, the people that really can afford the paint jobs right now, they're the people who buy computers and never upgrade to Google Chrome or Firefox or whatever. They get it with Bing on it and they just run Bing. So we're going to focus primarily on Google and Bing. Google because they're the biggest and big Bing because they're the default. Um, and then we'll put out, you know, we'll build an online portfolio of, hey, here's the job we did. You know, here's pictures from that job site and stuff. So that'll go on, you know, Facebook and whatnot. But the advertising dollars probably won't go on Facebook. Okay, so I'll be honest with you. You know, both of those are okay, but they're passive in terms of lead flow. Yeah. I mean, that's not an aggressive approach at all. That's, hey, I'm going to put up a profile. We'll get some posts up there. And as time goes on, that's going to mean less and less. If you're not actively on Google, you're noticing that, you know, they're prioritizing people that pay, right? So ultimately, yeah. you know, let me ask you this, the ad agency that you hired, what are they about? Can I ask how much they're charging you per month to, to do uh, Google? Their social media management and Google management is 250 bucks a month. Okay. That's extremely cheap and you're going to get very poor results. Well, they helped me get this 800,000 for the uh, freeze dryers. So didn't, they've done all right. And in our local market, they're the, one of the highest regarded ad agencies. So for 250 bucks a month, you might've either hit the lottery, but I would say that, man, someone that specializes in, in home service, it's a different, it's a different ball game. You know, I mean, at yeah. the end of the day, I mean, if you do a, you know, it's going to take you quite some time to compete with the guys that are at the top of the list in your area, you know, that's a lot of work that man, 250 bucks. You might, I would love to hear, I, I would love to hear the success story on that, you know, but that, you know, to, to, yeah. to, you know, if it's working for you, but at the end of the day, Dustin, man, I, I'm, I'm trying to find a, a, an avenue to kind of, to hit on here, man. I don't want to waste your time, brother. I mean, where, where do you, where do you find me coming in and helping you, man? You seem to have everything figured out. Well, is there, is there value in things like Angie or any of that? Are any of those leads? worth anything you know honestly man i mean from my perspective i've been doing this long enough i've talked to hundreds and hundreds of business owners you know if you come on here i want to be honest with you in a way that i try not to offend anyone and i don't want you to think that i sure. i know everything I'm, I'm doing this for free because i care i really would love for you to get off on the right foot so let's just make sure that's clear yeah. you know at the end of the day yeah, what i i'm just being honest with you i love what you're trying to do i love that you work with your son i love that you're trying to build this to be honest with you man i know this game you know it's my game i study it yeah. I, i'm a student of it first of all you can't write off facebook that's where every one of your customers hangs out so for you to tell me right. that facebook is something that you're not going to put advertising dollars in you're going to be missing out. You're going to be left out of the game. That's all. I mean, it's ultimately, if you have, if you have, um, you know, if it, again, this is, if you don't like Facebook for whatever other reason, then that's totally fine. But ultimately Facebook is where your customers are hanging out. And that also includes Instagram. When people are scrolling through yeah. Facebook and they see a before and after picture of a paint job, it triggers an emotional response. Okay. And that's really what's yeah. happening. Okay. You have two types of customers. You have ones that are going to go to Google and you have ones that are going to go on social media. That are your two types of customers. The difference between those two types of customers are intent. Okay. Which I'm sure you understand is that the fact that somebody is going to be Googling a painting job means that they're high intent. That means they've already made up their mind that they want a painting job. Would you agree with that? Oh yeah, definitely. Okay. And those are the best customers. Don't get me wrong. And I don't think there's anything wrong with you spending money on there. I just think that that's not going to propel you in the beginning of your business. Okay. Ultimately freeze dryers versus painting companies in the local market. You know, you have to look at it like this. There's not as many freeze dryer companies. And if there are, Maybe they're not as aggressive as you were on Google, which is great. But when it comes to painting companies, if you Google painting companies in your area, there's 20 or 30 options. Well, why, yeah. why choose you? So at the end of the day, unless you have the most reviews on that local Google listing, which is going to take you some years to do, to get authentic reviews, then you need a different approach if you want to win. And that means that you need to create the emotional response to get someone to get a paint job. How do you do that? That's done on, Google, that's on, that's done on social media. Because the only way yeah, what to do, do you that think? Is, say it again. What do you think? Do you think? What do you think the uh, percentage of ad spend, the balance is between, for instance, Google Bing versus Facebook? There's, there's so many different ways to spend money on Google. You have SEO. You have local SEO. You have Google local services ads. Now you have Google guaranteed. 
I mean, it really depends. And that's where, where I say is that, you know, someone that is doing ads for the freeze dryer is not going to really know the game of Google guaranteed for contractors, because ultimately this is an entire new thing that just got created maybe a few months ago. And now there's Google guaranteed where Google's essentially a paid lead service now. Where if you have a Google guaranteed green check mark next to your name, you're going to get favored amongst everyone else because you submitted your insurance documents and you got approved. Right? Yeah. Yeah. This is yeah. different. And that is part of what we're Yeah, that's okay. part of and what what we're doing here. Part of part of the package. So, at the end of the day, okay, they manage the Google, they manage that Google page and listing, but ultimately what's going to make you stand out most is reviews. And early on in the business, I know it took me a year to get 25 reviews. Okay, so yeah. many people don't just jump at companies that have less than reviews. It's really about who's around them. If, if eight companies have over 30 reviews and you have none, generally speaking, you're going to be missing out on a lot of traffic just because of that. So that's something that I'm saying. Yeah. If you want a strategic advantage, the strategic advantage is social media because you have the ability to showcase your personality. You know, I think you did you not recently just post a picture of you and your son? Working yeah, together? definitely. That, yep. That's your profile picture. Let me tell you something. If you ran an ad on Facebook with you and your son with the same caption that you put out that said something along the lines of there's nothing better than working with my son. Was that you? I think that was you, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 That triggers something emotional in somebody who values family that ultimately you're not going to get that on Google. That's all I'm saying. Right. And if that just pops up on their Facebook, yeah. because he's got two guys, he's got a paint sprayer in his hand and it says, Hey, you know, homeowners in my area. Hey, my name's Dustin. We just started color pros North with my son and we're here to, you know, make an impact. Right. And ultimately that is the yeah. type of relationships that you want to build that you can't build on Google or on Bing. And that creates loyalty, which you also don't have on Google and Bing. Last point, you asked me about Angie Leeds. Is it a good thing or is it a bad thing? Really, man, these are just people on the other side of the computer screen putting in their information. The thing is, they trust Angie Leeds more than they trust you because they don't know you, right? So ultimately, yeah. they're very good, but you got to realize the game you're playing is there's four other people that are going to get the same information. How do you stand out? One of the ways, of course, with drip jobs is you can set it up to where they automatically get a text and an email. And within that email, you create the context. What does it say? Tell your story. Tell who you are. Call immediately. Nurture that lead. So it's a different ball game. But at the end of the day, you know, two grand right off the bat, um, you know, again, I would allocate at least 50% of that to Facebook. But that would require you having somebody to manage and operate it, which might be a little bit more. Well, the, uh, the folks that I have, they will do it. I've just directed them to help us build our Google presence first. So they're going to do whatever I ask them to do. Sure. Sure. They're, yeah. they're, they're not steering me. They're, they say, here's our set of skills. Yep. And we just spent the last year, you know, trying to, to do it. Yeah. Um, and I spent, you know, pretty much out of that, that revenue that we generated, I think we might've spent $3,000 on advertising. The rest I mean, of it was just me, you nailed me being it. present. I mean, I'm just being honest with yeah. you, you nailed a niche. I mean, that's why it was so successful, but don't think that it's going to be that easy in home service. It's not. It's just a right. totally no, I don't. I mean, I'm just, I'm just making it clear because that's an amazing accomplishment. What you did with your, you know, with, with the freeze dryers. But again, mm -hmm. with, with, with what we're trying to do here, this is a game that so many people are trying to figure out. And for me, in my experience, $250 a month, again, either you hit the lottery or you're going to be set up for a major disappointment when it comes to your results. Now, have they generated yeah. any leads or opportunities for you yet? Or are we just getting set I up? I haven't still? even just getting set up still. I'm still working on, I'll get my EIN this week. So. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, man. I mean, part of what you were asking was lead acquisition. The, the, the secret here, you, as many, you get as many leads as you can from all sorts of channels, do as many estimates as you can. But I would yeah. also think yeah. of it like this, man, go into this thing with the end goal in mind. The goal here, like you said, man, and I was happy to hear you're not painting. You don't want to paint. You're here to do estimates. You're here to sell. You're here to grow the team. Finding one good applicant to join your company, um, finding one good applicant to join your company takes maybe going through 10 different interviews to get to that one person. Yeah. So my yeah. question to you again, you know, I didn't ask this yet, but what, what does the hiring funnel look like right now? I mean, do we have an ad out? Do we have anything in that regard working yet? And if so, would you like some insight on how I find my painters? Uh, I would like insight on how you find your painters. Um, I've, I've generated some ad copy to, to put out and, okay. You know, full disclosure, I totally plagiarized Nick Slavic. <laughs> I don't think he'd mind. 
<laughs> I don't think you would either. That's why I don't mind admitting it. But um, I've generated like 20 different okay. ad copies based off of, you know, the one okay. that he put out that really struck me the most. Um, I've structured my pay schedule to be quite similar to what he has um, yeah. in terms of, you know, pay scale, um, the ability to grow as your skills improve, yeah. you know, as productivity goes up, you get better pay, things like that. Um, I haven't put anything out yet because yeah. again, I'm waiting on my EIN. I'm Wait, waiting on my insurance. I would just say this at the end of the day, it, it's, there's nothing wrong with putting something out just to see what comes back in, you know, ultimately yeah. just put something out to see what comes back in. So you can see, Hey man, what type of people are applying? What, you know, what, um, uh, you know, what are they, what, you know, <laughs> what are some things that I can read on this resume that would make me think, is this the type of person that I want? Right. Right. Uh, the thing that I'm really looking for in this, in this aspect is, um, where are you recruiting from? I mean, I can go down to the Benjamin Moore store yeah. and hang out and, you know, solicit painters as they're coming in and hand out business cards. Think of hiring as lead generation, right? The same way you're thinking, man, where do yeah. I find these customers is the same thing that you want to think of, man, where do I find these painters? Cause really, if you position yourself as the middleman, that's really what you're doing. You're connecting the supply and you're connecting the demand. These are the companies that scale right. so fast because they are not painting because they realize, Hey, I'm going to spend resources as much as possible on recruiting painters. And then I'm going to spend as much resources as possible on recruiting, uh, customers, right? That's all they do yeah. is they just move the money around. Right. And they, and they obviously build, uh, it within from there, but ultimately it's like, man, where, where are people applying? Right. That should be the, the thought is like, well, you know, if I had to allocate one, you know, uh, money to one resource, it'd probably be indeed. Cause I just feel like everyone that's someone's first instinct when they want to find a job is like, man, let me go on indeed. I don't think anyone does it better. Right. I, I just stopped doing everything else. I'm like, man, if I'm going to do something, I'd rather be, it be in one place. That's where everyone goes. Right. They've just capitalized okay. on, uh, they just, they just took over the market there. So indeed, and they have such great hiring tools. You can actually set up video interviews where people would actually, um, you know, send in a little video. Like you might ask a question, Hey, how, how important is getting this job to you? Right. And then you would want a video response and then just watch the videos and, and start learning the process of trying to hire strangers, which is always a challenge. Right. Um, and again, yeah. there's nothing stopping you from doing that now and maybe even pacing it out to the point to where you'll be ready. I think you said by the end of January, you want to launch this thing, right? Was that the goal? Yeah, we're trying to be up and moving by February 1st. Love part that. of the, the fear here, part of the fear here is hiring a guy and then not having a job for him to go do. You okay. Know, that's one way to look we don't, at it. We don't have any jobs on the books yet. That's, so. that's one way to look at it, Dustin. But for me, I've never had a greater motivation than when I did hire someone and I was now held accountable <laughs> to make sure they had work to do. Right. Yeah. I mean, doesn't that channel right. some sort of resourcefulness that we don't usually get when it's just us or a family member, but we'd be like, Hey man, we don't have work this week. But so ultimately, man, yeah. like, I would look at that as more of a hedge than it is, you know, something to delay to make sure everything's perfectly aligned because that's going to be the theme of your entire business is deciding when the right time to hire is versus when you know how many jobs we have like it never you it doesn't usually work out to where we get this big job and then we want to just hire really quick because we have the confidence in our schedule it kind of requires us having right. a little bit of faith ahead of time and then you know meeting that meeting that demand through our saying, you know what? Hey, we hired this rock star. Hey, let's just do the Facebook marketing and let's get as many leads as possible. And now you're like motivated to convert that customer more so than you would be without that pressure. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. And I have a history of leaning into the things I fear. So I love just, it. Uh, yeah, just do it. So. I would say that that's a, that's definitely <laughs> something I would do. Like at least today is to get an ad out, just to see what comes out, or just to learn the Indeed platform, man. Because it's like, you know, and okay. and I'll just tell you this in my experience. I don't know what yours is, and I might ask, like, have you hired people consistently before? It sounds like you've just maybe have done a lot of this type of work yourself, or maybe had someone come in and like, have you ever had a structured it hiring process before? In the, uh, in the trades, no, but okay. I, as a kid, I was in retail management. So I was, oh, yeah. you know, I hired people. Okay. So in the trades, what you're going to learn is, um, 
it again, like I mentioned, I'm, I blitzed through this, but you're going to have to go through about four or five people that you really think are good fits to get to a really good fit. And that's just, yeah. at least from my experience, and I'm being very liberal on that number because ultimately, man, it's like, first you got to identify what you're looking for. And I think the first thing you got to realize is this is the first person coming into this company, right? This is, this person can't just be a helper. Cause guess what, Dustin, you're going to be working if he's just a helper. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So it has to be somebody that knows all aspects of painting, right. Or at least to the degree of which you hire them or you, you get a job to do a bedroom. They know the order of operations, but guess what? There's this whole other side of it. Dustin is, can they talk to the customer when you're not there? Right. You can have a great yeah. painter, but if they're extremely rough around the edges and they make you feel uncomfortable, you're not going to send them in someone's home. Right. So again, it's January 4th. It might take you four weeks to go through 60 applicants do 10 phone interviews, do four in-person interviews to finally land on somebody that you say, you know what, this is the guy, you know, that's, that's what I'm saying is that's proactive. And again, when it comes to a marketing campaign, if you can align marketing with this hire at the same time, mesh them together. And again, I'll tell you, man, Facebook is a monster. They know what they're doing in terms of, Hey, is boosting a post going to generate me income? It could, but it's not as good as someone else managing your ads for you, building creative, building. reusing copy that they know works for a painter in a different city, right? That has converted yeah. over and over yeah. and over again. Like you're really paying for somebody to optimize your dollar in that regard. And if you right. have someone cool, great, but home service is different. I would at least ask if they've worked with any home services before. Maybe they have. Maybe That's actually their bread and butter. Is their it? whole their. I was the odd one out trying to sell a product. Okay. Their whole, the whole rest of their thing is, is services. Well, if you, if you drop, if you, if you drop their info, you're going to get flooded with, uh, uh, with requests for, for what they're charging. I mean, Hey, if it works, it works. You know, I mean, I can't <laughs> deny, uh, you know, I can't Am deny. I, can I give a shout out? Yeah. Sure. And you're People are are probably like, of, who is this company? I'd love to know. Who is it? <laughs> they're, uh, they're out of Coeur d'Alene, Idaho and they're okay. called front ROI. All, front, all one word, front ROI. Well, guarantee you people are going to reach out to them. <laughs> yeah, just and make I, sure I get my affiliate link. Yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> hey, tell them Dustin sent so he gets paid. Um, but exactly. you know, man, look, Dustin, I want you to get off in the All right of a sudden, my right advertising now. goes to zero. Can we, can we talk real quick about the emotional selling that you mentioned earlier? Yeah. Yeah. This is okay. something I don't know so, anything about. So, sorry. I mean, you're, I, I, you're I have some ideas. It. It's but... just, I'd rather you learn it with strategy rather than by, uh, you know, uh, failing, fire. <laughs> you know, fire, right? Like ultimately I want you to realize that emotional selling starts with one question and it's called why that's all. It's just why, right? Yeah. We want to identify why someone wants the job. Right. And I want to ask you, cause I like, I, I think this translates to anything. Why does somebody want, uh, a, a freeze dryer? What are some reasons? Uh, they want to, like you, they want to provide uh, healthy, nutritious snacks for their family. Okay. Um, a lot of the people that I sell to, they they want to start a side hustle, so they freeze dry candy, uh -huh. uh, and they resell the candy. Uh huh. But well, there, wrong. you know, there's kind of two markets. So mostly, you would there's say a, healthy lifestyle side hustle. I think we have a uh, don't we have a hunter's market? Um, of people that want to store their, uh, store their, their beef that they, that they get from, from hunting. <laughs> I don't know anyone hunting beef, but <laughs> not hunting. You know what I mean? Uh, venison, venison. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, you need to spend more time with Nick Slavic. I think so. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Ow, they're just, um, farm, just like shooting a gun. <laughs> Yeah, well, there's kind of two markets. So the the candy market, the, the yeah. entrepreneurial side of things is, is the, a tiny, tiny minority. Yeah. There's half a million of these units in service. And if 30,000 of them are owned by candy makers, I'd be surprised. So most of um, it for people that want to that want healthy foods, healthy snacks type of thing. Right, right. So it's it's got to do with lifestyle. It's got to. And this is why I love selling these things. Because the people that buy these things, they're forward thinking. Yeah. They're thinking, you know, they're, they're concerned about the future. They right. want to be prepared. Right. They're, they're the kind of people that you want to know, right. you know. Okay. So salt tell of me, the earth. So, so when you hear somebody is like, like me, I was like, hey, man, we want healthy snacks for our kid. You kind of light up and yeah. say, this is my ideal customer, right? 
Like this, uh, this is a lock. Like it's almost like because you know yeah. so much value around this and you know that what you offer provides so much value around this. So when you talk about right. emotional selling, the first thing is to identify your ideal customer profile when it comes to commodity, like what you're offering uh, here as you know, you have the ideal customer profile, probably um, middle aged thirties, um, you know, man or woman. It's almost, uh, it's almost right. always women 50 plus. Is it really? Okay. Yep. So it's, it's the same people who buy painting services. True. Okay. So they're kind of in the same world. But my suggest, my thought would be, hey, man, do it? Maybe, maybe, maybe the market would be somebody that has young kids, maybe like me, or it could just be somebody. Sometimes. Sometimes, right? So, so that's your that's your ICP, man. It's just this this t specific type of individual. Now, and you kind of name too. Then you have the side hustle guy, where he's probably looking at dollars ra rather than the intrinsic value, right? Right. It's, it's easier for me to sell to the entrepreneur than it is to the, well, it's, if it's someone like you, that's, that's really the hard part. Cause then it's, right. then it's I got to like, sell I really you on, oh, three grand on this. Like is health worth it? Right. <laughs> well, you know? the health side of it is obviously worth it, but, um, you know, how many, how many bags of fruit are you actually going to eat? Yeah. You know, right. if, if it's a <laughs> yeah. snack and a treat, like that's like, Hey, I like Snickers bar. Should I buy right. a Snickers factory? Right. You know? So how do you provide value to somebody? So you did a great job of selling these things, right. but let me ask you this. You just told me the objections, right? Like would how, yeah. tell me how you were able to provide value and sell it. Well, for that, I go to my logic and I say, Hey, look, you know, how many bags of can or how many bags of frozen strawberries do you buy in a year? Right. You know, or how much, how much food does your family throw away in a year? Sure. You know, when your wife, when your wife makes spaghetti for the family, does a third of it wind up in the freezer to die a slow death of freezer burn and, you know, never to see the sun again? You know, you have a choice here. You can put it in the freezer and let it die a slow death and throw it away. And now you've lost that money or you stick it in the freeze dryer, you freeze dry it. And then, you know, if you've got 10 plus year old kids, when they come home from school and you're at work late, they pull it out and they can have a hot meal. Okay. That you know is nutritious. It's not SpaghettiOs. It's Love not, it. you know, Chef Boyardee. You've got mom's home cooked food ready to rock and roll just by boiling some water in the microwave or something. Love like that. that. Okay. So you're right now, when I compare that to painting, you're convincing someone as to why they should paint their house, right? Well, you want to make sure that you protect yeah. the wood. You want to make sure that, you know, the, the house right. is sealed. Because you've made a significant good. investment. It here, has great you know, retail and, value, right? So so here's the right. deal. Here's the deal. There's not many options for a freeze dryer, right? I mean, I don't think right. like, you know, so ultimately you're the kind of the clear choice as long as you do what you're doing. Now, in the painting side of things, most people know that they should paint the house. The key here right. is to get them to, to, to buy it from you. <laughs> you know, right. to buy it from you. Right. So everyone's coming to that customer saying, Hey, you know, you can save your food and you know that you're going to save money here or you can have healthy snacks. And it's like, okay, you, you should paint your house because, and, and they obviously know that at that point. So the game now changes right. to why they should hire Dustin and color pros. And the thing is, is that the only way to do that is to drill down into the why beyond the painting, right there. The, we, we don't sell, right. painting. I don't sell painting. I sell, I sell a dream and it's their dream and I'm just making them aware that I can sell it to them. So here's, here's what I want you to know is that there's all sorts of different types of customers. You mentioned that in your business of freeze dryer, you have the mom uh, or the healthy individual that wants a healthy you know, lifestyle. And then you have the entrepreneur that's two, but in the painting business, man, we have a bunch, right? So the first one is, mm -hmm. um, is someone that's moving into a home, right? So they're moving into yep. the new home. Okay. And they're going to stay there. Maybe it's a forever home. Maybe it's a long-term move. Okay. Now, would you agree that somebody moving into a home? Okay. And somebody who they want to is, personalize. Right. And somebody who is calling you and say, Hey man, I'm flipping this home. Would you agree that those people value different things? Absolutely. Oh yeah, for right. sure. Right. So yeah, the flipper only, wants a whiz bang, get out of his way. Right. 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 Super cheap, high yeah. profit margin. Right. So the only, if the, only the thing, uh, if the only thing in your arsenal is to go there and explain why they should paint, then ultimately you have no basis to really get someone to sway to pay you more, right? So we got to know right. ahead of time. And the cool thing is, is that there's a finite amount of people 
types that buy our services, which is cool because that means we can identify what they need, what they want and what they desire. And then we can position our sales process in a way that aligns with it. So the lady moving into her house, if I called you Dustin right now and I said, Hey, Dustin color pros, I saw your great Google ad, uh, by, uh, by this company that you hired, they must be amazing. And I would like an estimate to paint. Okay. And I say, Dustin, I'm Absolutely. moving into the house. What would be your next move? That's, that's very exciting news. Congratulations on your new home. Is this, uh, is this a place you plan on being forever? And when you moved in, did uh, what did you think of the colors of the home? And what would you like to change? Okay. So, How do you want to make it your own? Okay. I haven't moved in just yet, Dustin. But yes, I think that we're, I think this is going to be the place that we spend a long time in. Awesome. Awesome. Do you have a color palette in mind or do you need a color consultation? Or uh, we have an idea. Do you have some, yeah. uh, some ideas from Pinterest? Yeah, we have an idea. Yeah, I'm, I, I, okay. a color consultation would be nice. Sure. Okay. When would be a good time to schedule that? Um, well, the thing is, is that I got the realtor um, that's going to have access to the house. So we kind of got to coordinate, coordinate her schedule. So I'm not, I'm not quite sure yet. How can, I, uh, how can I make that easier? Can I get their numbers and see what their schedule looks like and we can yeah, work something you could, out? Yeah, you could do that. Okay, perfect. Go ahead and uh, shoot that over to me uh, through this number that you got okay. me on here. Just send it as a text and I'll take care of that. I'll schedule that. Okay. And then I'll get back to you with what they say and how that aligns okay. with my schedule. Good. All right. Here's the deal. So do you I want, I want you to realize though, you did okay, but you're, you didn't keep what's all right. So I want you to position yourself as the person who's moving in and you have to reach out to a painting company. Okay. What are other things going on right now outside of painting that are important for someone that's moving in? Movers, maybe? Uh, coordinating with movers, yeah. Right, movers, right? So you got movers, you got a realtor, you got a closing date, yeah. right? You got all these things. So can't you be more of a facilitator as opposed to somebody that is just focused on the painting? Screw the painting, right? We know we're going to do a good job. You yeah. called me. We're going to change the color of the house, right? The painting's not important. Colors are okay. But what's more important, Mrs. Jones, is figuring out when you're closing so I can align my schedule to make sure that the job gets done before you move in. Does that Got make it. sense? Yep. Right? So the, the conversation, oh, yeah. if it were me, so go ahead and ask me and I'll tell you what I would say. So you're calling me. You want your house so Sure. Uh, we'd like to get the house painted and, uh, we just, we closed on it, but we haven't moved in yet. Okay. Uh, and that's, that's still kind of uh pending. Sure. When are the movers scheduled? Uh, two weeks from now. Okay. So we need to move quick. First thing I need you to know is that we can make this happen. So rest assured you called the right company. Second thing I want you to know is that we're going to speed things up here. We have painted all sorts of homes. Chances are there's over 50 photos online of your house. What I'm going to do is put together a quote for you and send it to you within the hour so we can get moving on this if we're the right fit. Okay, so that builds in the sense of urgency. Urgency and keeping in mind, yeah. doesn't that save them all those steps of the realtor, right? Doesn't that save yeah. them all the questions of how much it's going to cost? Doesn't that, doesn't that supersede the logic of price when I'm adding value in relation to their goal? Yeah. Because ultimately, I know that their goal is to move in. Their goal, yeah, they want a great paint job, but they want to get in their house. And the last thing they want to do right. is have to call their movers and say, hey, we need to adjust the schedule. No one wants to do that, dude. Right? Yeah. So the first thing is affirm after you hear the closing date that you can make it happen. Right? Because that's a big concern. Man, we yeah. waited too long to call the painters. I didn't even think about it. Right? We want this yeah. house painted before we move in. We don't want to deal with painters and then have to move things again. Right. So, right. so yep. that's emotional selling is understanding that most of the time we're not selling the paint job. Right. And we win the game against people that are selling the paint job, explaining to customers why they need things painted. They know they need it painted. We're just showing you now we're already three steps ahead by explaining to you why you should pick us. Hey, first of all, I answer okay. the phone prompt. I answer the right questions. I'm on the same page as you. I know your goal. OK, who cares? Yep. I'll do the estimate online. I'll probably beef it up a little bit, too. You know, if I make a major mistake, then I made the major mistake. But ultimately, you and I can probably, Dustin, both look at a house online and come up with a price together and be not too far yeah. from one another. Right. I mean, ultimately, we can. Right. So so what it really yeah. requires. And then again, here's 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 another type of customer. So we have someone moving into a house, someone flipping a house. OK, what about 
What about somebody moving out of a house that they lived in, not flipping, but moving into a new home? Tell me how you would build value with that individual. Um, without being in the, the scripted mode, I'm going to look at more budget-minded options in terms of paint. I'm not going to try you and go. put, you know, Sherwin-Williams emerald on the wall okay. to, you know, yeah. for a color that's probably going to get right. changed when the next people move in. And I want you to remember that because that's why the question of why is a no non-negotiable because if we don't know that ahead of time, yeah. I've been in this position, I've done my whole sales spiel. And then at the end they say, well, I'm just moving anyway. And I talked about duration, talked about all the good product yeah. warranty. And they're probably thinking like, I don't care about any of that. Stuff. Don't care. It's <laughs> right? none of my business but, after I move out. But again, you're missing the major, major, major. Listen, let me tell you something. The thing that creates the most sales in our economy is urgency. Okay. So yeah. although yes, you're doing them a favor by not talking about things that are expensive. First of all, instead of telling me what you're not going to do, tell me what you are going to do. You are going to offer a budget friendly option in terms of paint. So, Hey, just so you know, for people that move out, we don't put the highest amount, highest product. We actually have a product called yeah. super paint flat. That's great for move outs. Okay. And it, mm -hmm. it's super affordable. It's going to save you guys a lot of money. Next, here's the deal. Yeah. I actually have an opening. It's a three day opening, which is about the time we'll need to do this job coming up in the next week or so that I can get you guys in here so we can get some photos taken and get this house listed. Yeah. yeah. Emotional selling is just aligning your sales process with what their desires are. So it makes it feel like you're an advocate for their goal. Right. Yeah. Another yeah. example, somebody that gets a letter from an HOA, right? This is somebody that doesn't really value painting, but has to do it. How do we win them over? Uh, well, I don't know on that one. That okay. One. So you just got an HOA letter. You're my customer. You called me and said, Tanner, I need an estimate. HOA just sent me a letter. How can I be the guy you choose? <laughs> <laughs> These dirt bags at the HOA are giving me a hard time. I can't stand those yeah, Karens. Yeah, 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 yeah. I need to get this problem solved yeah, right yeah, away, yeah. man. Yeah. Um, well, what it comes down to is, let's think about it. First of all, you don't want to spend the money that I'm going to have to charge you. And I understand that. So I'm going to highlight how affordable yeah. we are, right? I just went from a premium yeah. painting company to an affordable painting company by a change of words. Don't worry, we have an affordable option for this situation. Second, here's the deal. Once you approve the proposal, I'll go ahead and send it to your HOA for you so they know not to find you if they were planning on doing so, okay? And that'll buy us some time okay. so we can get things in line so they don't send you any more letters. I know that's stressful. Last, we actually have a pressure washing package. I noticed that the driveway and walkway in the front of your house could use it. I'm gonna throw that in for free so you don't get another letter. <laughs> you see, it's like, dude, it's like, oh, okay, okay, okay. You got my back. You got my back, right? I just gave you three different yep. sales pitches. Your job is to create seven or eight based on the specific scenario. And what this is all about is alignment dust. And that's, that's emotional selling. It's actually having empathy um, in regards to the person's specific situation and selling the way that you would want to be sold. Yeah. So keep that in mind. And it starts with why, as soon as you figure out that reasoning, Reverse engineer what would be best case scenario for you. If you were that person moving into a house, you have all these movers, you got all the schedule, you, you have to call companies to come out, you have to meet them, you don't know who you're going to hire. And then you call premium painting and they give you a quote within an hour that's accurate, you know, and uh, they get on the schedule and then they're, they're coming in before the movers come in. And I just saved you a major headache. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. So right. that was not at all what I uh, imagined with emotional selling. <laughs> I mean, to me, that's, to me, that's the logic of it. It uh, is, you know. it, it is logical, but it's not, it's not self-explanatory. So that's why I think it crosses yeah. the barrier of emotion because it's not something that's like cut and dry. It's like, it's pretty simple. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's really putting the, um, the, the modus operandi as being a service provider, not just a painter. hundred percent. Bingo. We don't paint. We, we pay, we, we yeah. facilitate your, your end result. And we know that some people just call us just because they want to change the color. That's where we emphasize that color consultation. It's all about the color consultation. It's yeah. all about the appeal. It's all about how amazing it's going to look. It's all about, I mean, this is, this is sale. You know, we're just. That's the selling the dream rather than selling the, the dream, problem. brother. And that's the emotional aspect of it. No one wants to be, I've, I've been sold a lot of stuff. And the worst feeling is when somebody is selling stuff for their reasons instead of your reasons, you know? Yeah. 
And sometimes that's done subconsciously. That's not done. You know, it just feels that way. It's like, I've had people come and give me quotes for things. Didn't even ask me why I wanted the job done or what the reasoning behind what. So what did I do, Dustin? I just looked at the two quotes and went with the cheapest because no one else showed me why I should pay more. Logically, that didn't make sense. Yeah. Yeah. So Dustin, man, we covered a lot, brother. I think that's our time. Thank you. Yeah, man. I appreciate it, man. Was this has been great. Yeah, very valuable. Cool, man. Very much cool. appreciate it. Man, I want to see. Yeah, to help you get a better perspective. I want to see big things out of color pros this year, man. You guys are going to do a great job. And I'd love to get, hey, man, if I, I can leave you with anything, get that hiring ad out today so you can just start seeing what comes. Okay. You can learn Indeed. You can figure out how to put that ad out. Test your copy, right? Test your, you know, test test the data, man. You're marketing today. And really the goal is to, is to sell the dream to the people that are on the other side of that uh, who are at a job where they're not happy because you need a leader. And in your copy, you have to indicate that you're looking for a crew leader. Don't look for any, you're, you can't right now. Your first hire needs to be a crew leader. It needs to be, I mean, okay. you're gonna, either that or you're going to be on the job a lot more than you should be. Okay. All right, man. Cool. Good luck. Yeah. To you, my friend. So how do I get a hat, man? I'll send you one. I appreciate that. You just got to ask. <laughs> I got you. I did. I, I did. feel like one of those hats. I, I will definitely get you a hat. Just send me your uh, mailing address on Facebook. I'll take care of you. Thanks, man. Appreciate that. Hey, Thanks so much for the again, conversation. Again, anytime, man. Come back, come back again in a few weeks. I'd love to hear how things are going. Sounds great, man. We'll, right, we'll touch base. Take care, man. All right, later.